All right. Well, everyone, thank you for attending here this evening. We'll let everybody filter in, but we have with us nine-time PGA champion Matt K, as he is in the Discord, Matt Kucher, and our friend from Bridgestone, Adam Riberg. Hey, guys. Uh, happy to be on. Very cool. Well, thanks for taking the time this evening to join us. Um, we know technology, this platform's uh, fun sometimes, but we, we're really happy you're here. And we'd love to um, kick it off a little bit. I'm Cooper. I'm one of the co-founders and the head of community for Linksdow. Um, and we have up here on stage some, some friends that you've spoken to before, Nick, Jordan. And uh, we're really excited to get this kicked off. Uh, so, yeah, Adam, if you'd like to do a introduction for yourself, and we can dive right in. Oh boy, going straight to me. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, <clears throat> so I'm Adam Rayberg. I'm a senior marketing manager at Bridgestone Golf, and you know, in, in a real short way, um, I was in the green grass side of business. I was an assistant pro for many years, and thought I was going to be a head pro and a GM, and then I kind of moved to Bridgestone. I got really lucky. I went to college for civil engineering kind of went down that path but then wanted to do golf for some unknown reason and just love the game but I got really lucky and um, a job opened up at R&D at Bridgestone and I accepted that job and kind of got to do a little bit of both I had the engineering background and the golf background so it was like a really a dream job got to work with golf pros and fitting robots and design specifications so it was really kind of a a really nerd out job that I loved um, since I've moved over to marketing and, you know, I like to do creative things. So I still get to work with the guys. I hold on desperately to work with the tour players and work with amateurs on building the right golf ball, but then now get to kind of dip into the, the marketing side of things and really enjoy that and really love creating ads and, you know, graphics and stuff like that. And, and just, you know, I've got to do a lot of things at Bridgestone. So it's very cool. And I've been very lucky. Love it. Well, thanks for helping set this up. Um, I would love to, first of all, uh, jump in in light of the, the Bridgestone connection, making this possible here, Matt, and, uh, you know, kick things off. What's your favorite golf ball and what makes your golf ball selection so important? So when I finished uh, my time at Georgia Tech and then decided to turn pro, figuring out what, what equipment to play was kind of step number one. And, uh, Golf ball, I talked to a bunch of people, golf ball was, was kind of the most important piece of that puzzle. Uh, and at that time, I think the Pro-V had just come out. That, that was a time where if, if you had cut open a golf ball prior to that, you, you'd cut one open and you'd, you'd find all these rubber, rubber bands. They were wound golf balls with some liquid kind of squishy core. Uh, and people were just switching over. The Pro-V1 was kind of a, the proper three-piece golf ball no, none of those rubber bands that would come flying out um, but Bridgestone had been making a golf ball under the precept brand for Nick Price that was a solid solid core three-piece golf ball they had been probably making that for five years so that time precept or Bridgestone was was so far ahead of the curve in, in, in the golf ball market that it was a, it was easy to decide that that was the best ball on the market, um, and I feel like they have continued to stay as as a leader in, in golf ball technology. It's been fun to see it. every time their R and D folks come and ask me, uh, Matt, what what do you want in a golf ball? They, they pretty much know my answer has been been memorized. It's kind of what every pro wants. They want it to go further off the tee. They want it to spin and impossible. Uh, combination around what they've done is, is just remarkable over the years to, to continue to, to, to find that and tweak it and make a better product and so come to learn uh, the, the the compression of the golf ball the different pieces of it whether it's the mantle the core trying to get to compress the core but not not be something that's so soft like hitting a marshmallow course isn't going to go very far there needs to be some some firmness to it to get a real good rebound effect don't get much compression. You're not going through the different mantles to the core. You're only really touching the cover. So it's the cover that's so important in getting the spin around the greens. And um, it, it, it's really been fun. I, I enjoy the testing process. I enjoy the learning process. Um, and always impressed when I am able to test. And then when I get out on, on tour, 
the thing I, I enjoy the most is being around a chipping green and everybody chipping their own different golf balls and just at some point gathering a random selection and, and having chips with other balls. <laughs> laughing to myself, being, thinking it's hard for me to believe that pros actually play these balls that I've chipped with. I'm like, it just might as well be a, a pinnacle. Um, they just, they, they feel terrible. Uh, and so I, I, I laugh to myself. I take some pride. I, I take some, some, some ownership in knowing that, you know, I, I do have the best product. And hey, what, was, what was great for me to see when Tiger was making his comeback um, a couple of years ago, he kind of went on the same equipment search, knowing that he wanted to play the very best product uh, available. Not that an extra million dollars in endorsement money was going to mean anything to him. He was just looking to try to be the best best player again, and he went out and chose the Bridgestone golf ball. It was it was um, great confirmation, knowing that you know the, the product I had truly believed in, probably the greatest golfer ever, also thought was the, the best product out there. It was uh, awful, awfully nice to. See Bridgestone sign Tiger Woods, and and, and to see you know the, the work that he's done uh, in trying to have him as part of the R and D nature, and and how precise he is. I think I, I'm only going to see the benefits to you know how tough of a, a critic he's going to be of the golf ball. Yeah, that's that's definitely good confirmation there. Yeah, man. If you wouldn't mind me adding a few things. I'm yeah. You, I didn't get to speak with you Monday. We had our commercial shoot, and I talked to Tiger on our new podcast we launched. And you know, I wanted to talk, ask him about that like transition from wound to the solid core ball, which you kind of mentioned. And both of you guys kind of came out around that time. Like I always laugh because I graduated in '02, and I like was in high school when the internet hit. So I saw the internet kind of explode from high school to college, but you and Tiger were in that cool stage of seeing like the wound ball disappear in your like prime of your golf career as you guys were coming up because Tiger switched in 99. I know you switched a little sooner than that because you were in the preset ball and you mentioned, you know, Nick Price went on that amazing run in the 90s with a solid core two piece, I mean, three piece ball, the EV extra spin. A lot of people don't know the preset brand was kind of the Bridgestone before, but you played it in college and Nick Price had been playing it for a long time and kind of, he went on a kind of crazy two and a half, three year run to where, you know, he won three majors in the span of like, I think a 18 or 20 month span. He won three majors and that, you know, we've tested with him over the years a lot. And he said that that was due a lot to that. Like all of a sudden I got long, like I was, normal kind of the distance of everybody else maybe semi long and then all of a sudden i went from a ball that was built with rubber bands to a solid core rubber polymer material and he said all of a sudden i was like hitting it past guys that i'd never hit it by and he was like i had a i had a head start on the guys technology wise and you know tiger did the same thing he talked about playing in the masters you know the year he won the tiger slam he kind of switched over to that solid four ball and he just looked around and guys were still hitting wound balada balls down the fairway at Augusta. And, you know, he was obviously super fast already as far as swing speed, but then he had a ball that, you know, scientifically went further than everybody else. So it, it's, it's a cool transition that you guys had and playing that ball and kind of seeing it exit into new technology. Yeah, absolutely. It, um, it, it was, it was a game changer for sure. I mean, it, it didn't take, too too long for people to figure out that that was just a superior golf ball in, in basically every way. Um, but to, to to continue, I mean, I don't know how many how many generations past that precept EV extra spin we we are now. It's a um, it got to be ten generations better, and I feel like it continues to get better and better, which is is amazing to see, and not not an easy thing to do. Yeah, we had a this like i mentioned this past monday we had our shoot and one of the ideas we've thrown around which maybe we could do this next year shoot is um i wanted to do a blotta versus the newest generation of ball and have you guys hit some shots with driver and some shots around the greens and kind of show how technology it'd be very interesting to see some track men numbers of modern drivers with a lot of golf balls yeah it sure would that, that, that would be fun to do 
So Matt, speaking of the technology, aside from the ball, has there been any other, what, what's like the other most notable changes in, in technology in the game that you've seen through, through your career? I feel like irons are irons. I feel like shafts have been shafts. They're, they certainly have probably gotten more consistent, probably gotten lighter. Um, I don't think anything's changed like the like the golf ball has. Um, driver head size, of course, from when I started was was a lot smaller. It's almost um, funny to see. I've still got a set of clubs I used back in my college days, and uh, looking down at at, at the woods and particularly the driver and three wood you go wow we really used to, to hit these i mean they look barely bigger than the golf ball um so head size just just a, a larger sweet spot is basically what what that's been able to do but as far as uh, uh the rest of the stuff i think if you look at uh, the irons most guys are playing most guys are, wouldn't see a, a big difference uh you got a couple guys using a um, little more friendly thing. You probably see a lot more hybrids than you did uh, 20 years ago. Um, I think hi- hybrids been a uh, a beautiful advent, um, you know, and, and helpful to a, to a lot of people, including myself. I I first put in a kind of a, a three hybrid. Uh, my three iron was kind of an interchangeable uh, piece. There was one a standard three iron, one that was of a, a driving muscle back looking three iron and then uh that, that kind of took over for the standard three iron and then i had a, a hybrid that would go in and out it kind of trade depending on the golf course with my three iron and uh, augusta was the place it would always go in I, my regular driving three iron would come out and i, I knew around augusta that it just lots of long iron shots lots of times where you needed the ball to come in high and soft uh, and I, I just didn't have that ability with a, with a standard three iron, and so the, the hybrid went in. And uh, it would be generally for the first two or three years, it would be pretty much just an Augusta club, and then it it, it rotate out. And it has uh, it has now stayed in the bag. There there are more and more courses we play where that, that is a premium, you know, kind of kind of higher, longer, long irons, and that that hybrid has made uh, made my life a whole whole lot easier when it comes to shots from 220. Matt, when when would you say is the last time you um you played a persimmon? Was it Georgia Tech or before? Would have been before. Would have been uh, early high school, middle of high oh, school. Gotcha. Start, yeah, started seeing real metal woods come out. But um, funny, we got this this week the father son tournament is going on uh, up in Orlando, and I played with with my oldest son. Uh, the last couple of years and he's just a, a golf junkie loves kind of history loves checking out old clubs whether they're persimmon whether they're hickory all, all, all the stuff um and we got paired with tom kite i want to say two or three years ago and so i had tom tell my son cameron kind of some of the stories about persimmon woods and how much work it would be and and finding just one driver and one three wood and, you know going through anywhere from 20 to, to 100 different heads before you, you picked out the one you liked, the one that you know, looked, looked correct to you, that hit well, and uh, said it, it was really hard work. And when that, uh, when that driver kind of either wore out, gave out, whatever, whatever it was, it was um, you knew you had your work cut out for you to find that backup or that replacement. Very cool. Um, I've loved, so I know this is your first time on Discord, but have you done many online AMAs before with uh, with communities or any other platforms like Reddit or uh, Facebook or anything like that? I I believe this is my first of this uh, of this nature. Well, we're very excited about that. Um, had you heard of of Links or Links Dow before? I am. Uh, I'm probably not a good one to. To ask, I, I, I have uh, I have no no social media presence, um, so it's it's new to me. Um, but I'm actually anxious to to learn. I, I was told this is kind of a NFT uh, starter that got got going to this point. Yeah, that's that's correct. So we uh, we started off by by selling membership NFTs, and uh, most of the folks here in the audience are are members of LinksDAO and we're a kind of de- democratic group with a goal to buy a golf course. Um, and 
we're finding out that, you know, that's a long process. So in the meantime, we've partnered up with some great companies like Bridgestone uh, to bring member benefits to, to the group. And I, I do want to give a shout out to everyone here in the audience. We did take a screenshot. We're going to be picking a few random attendees to send uh, a dozen Bridgestone balls. So appreciate all of you for being here. Um, and, you know, we're a pretty big online golf community that, you know, just like you said, fanatics, fans of the game, golf junkies who who love it, and we get together and talk golf and um, get together in real life and play as well. Uh, but yeah, we we kind of started out with NFTs and Web three as our core, and uh, we're we're plugging along towards acquiring a golf course. So, w would the idea be somewhat like a Sweetens Cove type of deal? Bez, you want to take that one, or Mister Senor? All I can comment on is Sweetens Cove is my favorite golf course in the world, but Bez can talk more about <laughs> so, it. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. It's an amazing following. I've, I've just, uh, I did an event up at Sweetens Cove maybe two months ago. Uh, I was blown away. It's beautiful. It's fun. Uh, the, the whole energy and vibe of the place is way cool. But it seems like it, it, it has a unique following, which I feel like you guys you guys do as well. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a great, great idea, great concept, and hope... Uh, Hope you guys get to that point. Thanks. Yeah, we, we love Sweetens. I got to go out there with, with Mr. Senor before. And yeah, we're, we're definitely looking forward to having a really unique golf experience with a lot of that great energy. Sweetens is a, a kind of a magical place. So if we can replicate anything like that, we'll be very, very excited. Yeah, that, that, that would be cool. Yeah, what a, what a beautiful place. Bybee, very Bybee, great Bybee place. Absolutely. I'm actually going there on Tuesday to play uh, again. Oh, uh, so well, I, I would going to be nice? Probably not, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So with that being said, we, uh, of course, would love to have uh, both you and Adam as guests on our course when it does open in 2023. Um, we'd love to have you out and, and maybe you can assess how close we get to the, the Sweetens vibe. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we have a couple of community members that we uh, sourced some questions from that we'd love to bring up on stage to ask their questions as well. Um, we can get started here. Stoke, welcome to the stage. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Hey, Cooch. Thanks for joining. Um, I heard you guys talking about Sweetens Cove, but my question to you was... Um... You know, what is your favorite under the radar public course um, that not many people have heard of that is, you know, something that sticks out to you? And where is the location of that course, if you don't mind sharing? Oh, man, it's funny. I, I think of public courses and, and I, I straight away go to uh, Scotland and I go to North Berwick um, as, as one of my favorites. But it, I feel like over there any neighborhood course would just surprise you and be incredible. Um, I'm trying to think in, in the States though, where, um, where I'd go to, uh, I definitely loved Pacific dunes. Uh, got to go up to Nova Scotia, played, uh, Cabot links was blown away with Cabot links. Um, I think Mike Kaiser's done a great job with his golf destinations and just making, Fun courses, uh, unique courses, cool little, you know, places to go as, as a golf getaway. Uh, I, I think he's got a pretty good formula down for the uh, for, for the uh, golf golf junkies and, and guys that guys that want to make a trip somewhere. I, I think whether it's Bannon Dunes, Nova Scotia up to Cabot, those are two two great places to go. Yeah, that's that's awesome. It's wonderful to hear that, and I just you know. I had heard uh, that Cabot actually just acquired uh, World Woods, which is like, I guess, north of Tampa. Uh, I'm so excited to to potentially get to play that in the future, too. Oh, that's that's cool. I did not hear that. That the um, that, that, that property is fantastic that what, what, what Kaiser's doing with Cabot. And I, I did not hear he's got World Woods, but I'm sure they'll make it a, uh, a wonderful spot and fun, fun golf. Uh, we're here and I can't remember. I think they had, I don't know how many courses, but really cool practice facility as well. I think that's become you know, kind of one of those, those things you want when you go just a, a unique, fun place to be able to spend some time on the range, maybe even some sort of par three, some sort of kind of mini, mini courses, a, uh, a nice addition as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I appreciate it, Cooch. Um, all the best to you in the future. And thanks guys for the, the stage. 
Stoke, thanks a lot. Good to be good to be with you guys, and uh, good good luck with part of this group. I'm excited for you guys. Appreciate it. If you have time, uh, Matt, we have a couple more questions. That we yeah, absolutely. Do. Sweet, uh, Gabby, welcome up. Hello. Um, hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us today. I wanted to ask a couple questions. Um, my first one is. What advice would you give to any aspiring players who are trying to make it professionally? And then my second question is, what is your biggest hot take in golf? All right. Um, first, first one, thanks, Gabby. Uh, as far as advice to aspiring pros, it, it, it took me a while. If I was to kind of go back and give, give myself advice, it took me a while to kind of be comfortable with who I was as as a golfer so when I say that I, I made my way out on tour I had some some success as an amateur and um, kind of jumped out on tour pretty, pretty early and had some success early but, but then um, I, I kind of got bunched in with the uh, with the top players and it, it became a little bit intimidating maybe even daunting Standing on the range and hitting balls next to Tiger Woods and Ernie Els and Phil Mickelson and VJ Singh and uh, you know I'd watch them hit these these balls and they were doing things that I, I didn't think I could do. So whether it was you know carrying a three iron 220 yards in the air and landing it softly, you know smashing these drives, I felt like I needed to do more, be more. Uh, somebody I, I really wasn't uh, in order to be competitive and it took me a while one kind of get comfy around those guys two to have the confidence in myself that I, I, I was good the way I was didn't need to possess the same ad um, I think it was somewhat of the, the Tom Kite story that was relayed to me uh, and Tom Kite was number one in the world at a time when Greg Norman was vying for the number one spot. Greg Norman was, you know, the longest, straightest driver, pitting at 30 to 40 yards by Tom Kite. Uh, Tom Kite, you know, found a way just to get the ball in the hole and wear out all these guys. Uh, and thinking, man, if Tom Kite could do it, there's, there's no reason I can't do it. Uh, and so that, that helped to hear, you know, it, it was doable in, in a situation like that. Uh, and so realized that you know I, I was maybe more the Tom Kite than I was the Greg Norman, even though you know, I, when I was a kid, Greg Norman was the coolest coolest guy. Everybody wanted to be be like Greg, be like one of those guys that just you know, hit it long, played aggressive golf. Uh, but that was not um, not my makeup as as a, as a golfer. Uh, and so I, I just I, it took me a while to get comfortable. Uh, so that that would be my advice: not try to do something that you're not your DNA. If you if you are a long hitter, Gabby, it's a bonus. Uh, you know, learn how to get the ball in the hole. The, the game, the game is 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 all about getting the ball in the hole. And at some point, I, I even remember kind of having some likes and dislikes about what I thought made a good golf course, what I thought made good golf holes, and I'd even get kind of ruffled at at courses holes where I thought, uh, you know, I just hit a good shot yet I'm not rewarded the ball got into some collection or funnel and, and, and rolled off the green into some, some area where I've just hit you know, a five iron from 210 into what I thought was the fat side of the green. And now I'm, 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 I'm... yeah, if you're on, uh, have I, have I come back? There we go. You're back. There we go. Hey, you got me back. I have, I have no idea what happened. Sorry about that. But, uh, um, somehow, somehow I guess, uh, I got, got, knocked off um anyway I, I think i was in the middle of talking about to gabby uh kind of uh, being being comfy with who you are as a golfer and not trying to be somebody else um would be would be my biggest advice trying to trying to make it as a pro uh that that was something that took me took me several years to kind of whether it was gain that confidence gain that comfortableness gained uh just that that knowledge knowing who i who i was in a golfer and being good with that that's awesome advice that's really cool i don't, I don't know if i'm aspiring to be a pro but uh, i think gabby might be and I, I'll, I'll at least take that to my next uh 
my next friendly foursome to try to not be like the the pros like you that I grew up watching. Um, well, one one of the things I, I I certainly have learned and I think applies to everybody is, uh, I think you kind of got to go with what you've got that day. That there are days where I like to play the ball left to right. I like to play a fade. Some days it's a slice. Some days I'm hitting balls on the range and it, it, it's curving way more than I, I, I would like it to. And you kind of got to go with it. Other days it, it won't curve at all or if it's e- even like a draw and that, that just caps me. I hate, I hate seeing the ball go left. I was one of those guys that just thought that was, that was one of the, the, the killers of, of um, kind of quality golf. But at some point, I kind of had to swallow my pride and, and say, well, that's the shot I got today. That's the shot I got to play. Uh, and I think you kind of got to go with what you've got that day. I think you, you're best with whatever range time you give yourself to kind of figure out what, what you've got to work with. But then one of the other things I, I learned over the years was realizing that what you have on the range isn't always what you take to the, to the golf course. It, it doesn't always translate for some reason. And so I, I kind of, came up with a game plan uh, of playing the first couple holes pretty conservatively uh, and then figuring out after three, four, five holes, you know, if, I'm, if I'm hitting middle of fairways, if I'm hitting middle of greens to now potentially being more aggressive. If, if I'm not hitting middle of fairways, if I'm not hitting middle of the greens, I better keep trying to hit middle of greens and trying to play very conservative golf because it, it, it's probably not my day. I probably haven't come with my A game and I got to figure out, you know, turning a 74 into a 71 that day. Uh, and so kind of understanding this, those this first few holes is a bit of a learning curve of, of just how sharp am I today and, and, and how aggressive do I want to be today. That's awesome. Thank you, Gabby, for, for those questions. Um, all right, I think, uh, Nick, you you ready? Hey, Coop. There we go. Hey, Ooh, Matt, hi. thanks for uh, uh, thanks for coming in and spending some time with us. Uh, my question is, so I'm a seven handicap about, and I'd love to know if you think it would take over or under three clubs from your bag to beat me in a round. Oh, boy, could I break 80 with three clubs? Um, wow, that'd be a good bet. That would be a good bet. It'd be a three wood, yes. a six iron, and a wedge, right? Could I, could I break 80? Holy smokes. <laughs> I, I really think that's a toss-up. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take... Seven is seven is at your best though. A seven, the way a handicap works, I, I think, I think I could, I think I could win that one. I think seven, the way the handicap system is, you're shooting over eighty more than you're shooting under eighty. I think I could, I think, I think I'd go with the under. All right. Well, I'm happy to make this match happen if we need for the people who want to see this happen. So. <laughs> Sweetens Cove, or, or, or your guys, your guys, uh, your guys' version in 2023. Let's do it. Perfect. Let's do it. Excellent. Uh, and Bez, coming in with the anchor question. Are are you? I know he's hanging out with his kids right now. He might be available. Okay. Well, uh, I think Bez is is predisposed right now. But Matt, my final question is, uh, you know. Thank you so much for for being here with our online community. Um, you know, one of our our missions, right, is to to kind of grow the game, expand the game, uh, make it more accessible uh, by bringing it to people on the internet and and having golf communities and golf discussions online. Um, you know, we're talking about the technology changes in golf. What's your your take on growing the game? Ways that we can. Uh, kind of improve accessibility and get more young people into golf, uh, you know, going forward as, as we've seen a lot of changes through COVID and everything else, but love to hear your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I got uh, two young boys and I, I feel like I got lucky right now. They're 13 and 15 and uh, they both, both love the game of golf. Uh, and I realize I'm quite fortunate that, that they do. I, I've got plenty of 
my peers, my contemporaries on the PGA Tour whose kids want nothing to do with golf. Um, so I, I know that kids take to kind of whatever they take to, and you can't force anybody to take a liking to anything. Uh, but I think I my idea was just to, to expose them to it and, and to, to make it as, as much fun as possible. I knew easy to overcomplicate and thus make not much fun. So I've not given a whole lot of instruction. Um, just tried to make, make the whole experience fun, whether that was uh, take breaks to go fishing, take break, we'd, we'd take BB guns out to the golf course, we'd, we'd take breaks to have, have BB gun shooting practice. Um, let's see. I think getting kids involved and the first tee has been great. I think the PGA of America has got this um, team deal. I, I can't remember what they call it, but it, it looks awesome. looks like kids just love doing this uh, team event. Um, anything that, that kind of makes golf fun. And, and I know with our kids, um, the rules of golf had to go out the window. Golf uh, has, has so many rules. Now, etiquettes need to be part of it. Um, and, and, some of that's important, some of that's less important, but as far as like with kids playing by the rules of golf, I think those need to go out the window, whether it's if, if your kid needs to put it on a tee every time, regardless if it's, if it's in the fairway, if it's in a bunker, if it's whatever, now feel free to put it on a tee. If it's, uh, I had a, a time with, with our kids where my youngest was kind of a little bit discouraged because the big brother was doing a lot better than him. And told told my youngest you know stick with us we were playing a six hole loop we were th three holes in i said hang out for the next three holes um and for the next three holes you get two throws every hole wherever you want them pick it up you get to throw it and his eyes lit up and he, he saw that that would make for fun competition that he might actually win and quickly realized that you know off the tee was not the place for him to use one of his throws uh <laughs> he was more of advantage if he got closer to the green and used a throw or you know got you know, into a bush or a bunker and could use a throw um so i think i think kind of making golf about about having fun is is the greatest way to bring others into it and particularly the the younger generation and um making it fun i know uh top golf has been a, a nice addition it's kind of taken Way a lot of the, the 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 rules that go along with the game of golf and kind of get people get people started and, and the next levels, real golf. Uh, so any of that stuff has has been great. I, I think certainly amazing to see what COVID has done, uh, showing what what a great game the game of golf is. So many people, it was kind of the only thing that was available, and so it, it's just brought so, such great numbers to it. Uh, and everybody I talked to said. And I think we're going to see in the next few years, the numbers really go up because over COVID, all these kids that used to go to summer camp that could not go to summer camp, pick up golf. Uh, all these pros said, you wouldn't believe COVID junior clinics were just standing room only, uh, where it used to be these summertime junior clinics. All these kids were, were, were summer camp, were, were, were doing something other than golf, and, and golf was their only option. And so having, having that exposure for, for so many kids, I, I think we're going to see the, the, the curve of growth go up for the next few years. And um, it's really, it's, it's, it's a great, great time. I mean, uh, it's a great time to be in the game. It's, it's, it's a great time to be involved with the game. Um, and cool to see what you guys are doing from kind of growing it growing it with the, the online community seeing seeing the, the the way people love the game in different ways like sweet and cove is is such a unique different way that people fall in love with the game of golf um and i know what you guys are doing kind of kind of similar it's it, it's cool to see so many different ways that communities are, are coming together and, and kind of coming together around the game of golf it's all about fun right it's a it's a beautiful very fun game when you you have the right mindset for it so well, yeah, that's right about. very cool uh gabby is driving but she requested that i i do ask her follow-up question what is which is what is your biggest hot take in golf 
I don't know what that means. Uh, your most controversial opinion or uh, unique uh, take on on something in the game. <laughs> I, I'm probably in the minority with this this live tour uh, being on the PJ tour. Like I, I think this has been good good for golfers, good for certainly professional golfers. Um, right now, I feel like it's a great time to be a professional golfer you're kind of winning one way or another whether you grab live money or the pga tour has been forced to kind of up their game um not so sure i i agree with the the hatred that is going on you know amongst these these two tours i feel like uh you're you're on one side or another and uh, to me i see how live has brought you know some some unique ideas to the game of golf I, I like this team concept they're coming up with i think it's kind of fun and intriguing um i, I think if i'm a supporter of the pga tour if i'm one of the guys that are speaking on behalf of the tour i don't know that i'd be throwing stones I, I think i'd change it to try to talk more about how great the pga tour is um i, I think it's gotten to be you know a little bit too political in that sense where you're trying to um throw the other guy under the bus i think uh the tour is a great place to be and I, i'd be selling that as hard as i could or if i'm on the live tour i'd be selling the live tour and, and saying how great things are but the, the 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 name calling and stone throwing i think is is pretty petty um kind of wishing wishing they didn't go down that route i wish you know both sides would just talk about how great their side has it i think uh you know you can find find a silver lining either way i think it's 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 a it's an exciting time to be a professional golfer and kind of watch watch the game get pushed i think competition you know, forces good things to happen forces kind of the the the, the, the best out of people and uh, i think we're kind of getting some competition now in professional golf and and, and we're i think going to see a better product because of it so Excellent hot take, Matt. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it and your time being here today with us. All right. Thanks so much for having me and uh, lots of luck. I look forward to hearing about uh, your guys' golf course in 2023. We'll definitely keep you updated. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Night. And everyone in the audience, we are rolling straight from this into our Community Tuesday. So stick around, stay tuned. We have a lot of fun and exciting announcements for you coming right up but help me thank matt again uh for sharing his time with us this evening answering questions and thank you to all of the people who submitted questions came up on stage asked or submitted them in the form and thanks special thanks to adam and bridgestone adam very much appreciate you helping us out here tonight and coming up with matt yeah no problem at all really enjoyed the conversation and thanks for having me tag along Awesome. All right. Okay. Uh, I think we can kick it right over to Tungsten, uh, who had a fantastic pre-hosted uh, GGA call. If you were there, it was lovely. There was fireplace, fireside chats, and, and music going on. Uh, so I'll kick it right off to you. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. And thank you all for turning out for tonight's podium. Uh, I am... Happy to be the second most significant Matt to be on the call tonight. Appreciate Matt Cooch from Bridgestone for sending him out as well. So earlier tonight, we had our 2022 Global Golf Association season recap for our members. We kind of touched base on everything that had happened and everything that's coming in the future. And at the top of tonight's agenda, I'd like to share with all y'all out there what's been happening and some great announcements. So first up, if you're joining us for the first time, the GGA is, stands for the Global Golf Association. This is Lynx Dow's own member-to-member -member reciprocity program. And the platform provides global holders a way to discover and connect with other members and their amazing private clubs across the country and around the world to schedule and play golf together. At the end of the day, that's what it comes down to, providing more ways for our members to play golf together. So way back in February, another member of the Discord community, Steve Pomerantz, uh, Steve Palm, 
raised his hand to assist building a member to member reciprocity program for everyone while we waited to acquire our first club and enter the conversation with other clubs for club reciprocity for our members. So for the past year, we've had a number of amazing teammates join us on this journey. Uh, I'm going to give a chance. Uh, I want to thank everyone in a minute that's been part of it, but I'd like to fast forward to the fall where we launched the beta version of the platform. We had a couple hundred alpha member participants uh, sign up as both guests and hosts. You all provided us an incredible amount of feedback. And after a few months of early access, lots of testing, lots of iterating, shout out to the engineering team. I'm happy to share with everyone here this evening that we are flipping the switch on the Global Golf Association and opening our member to member reciprocity program to all global holders of the Lynx Dow ecosystem. So welcome one and all. We're looking forward to making sure you all have a chance to play great golf with one another. And that'll be a change that you'll see taking place overnight. And moving forward, if you have a global NFT, you will have access to the network and you will have requesting privileges. That being said, I wanna thank everyone who was part of the alpha class leading up to tonight. As alpha members, you raised your hand early, you raised your hand often, and we have a reward for y'all. You may have heard in the first call, but happy to share again here. We have a limited edition GGA Alpha Class PO app that's dropping tomorrow. The claim instructions will be in the Global Golf Association channel. And the great thing about this PO app is we have designed it to be a unique digital collectible to add to your wall of accomplishments. And you're going to be able to use this Alpha Class PO app for priority access to GGA events in the future and priority access to claim limited edition GGA swag. We have underway designs on a GGA bag tag and some other very cool things. So if you're a member of the Alpha class, you'll see the claim instructions and you can go ahead and grab that. It's our first of many rewards to thank all of you for being part of the network. In fact, the network wouldn't be anything without you. To that end, we wanna make sure you have continued ongoing resources and support to have a great experience in the GGA. So keep an eye out for new guides to being a host and being a guest in the Global Golf Association. There's also gonna be a modern day golf etiquette guide showing up so that as we go into the 2023 golf season, everyone can put their best foot forward and play lots of golf together. As always, the team is here, ready, willing, and able to take your feedback and suggestions. And we're gonna be all ears for the next few months, continuing to iterate on the platform and make sure it is the best possible golfing experience that exists in Web3 today. I do want to take a minute to thank everyone who was part of the team to make this happen. Uh, there's a saying out there, it takes a village, and by no means is the GGA something that I created or came up with my own or even built on my own. Although I've been a very vociferous proponent for it, it's been on behalf of the global community. But I do want to send a huge shout out and thank you to not only Steve Pomerantz, who raised his hand early, but also Mr. Ryan Prickett for helping set our North Star for the program and make sure that we honored the best in golf while opening it up to more individuals. Along the same lines, Mr. Senor Hill and the entire engineering team has been building passionately and nonstop since this summer to make sure that the ideas that we came up with turned into an actual platform. So shout out to y'all. A couple other big members of the community, Jared, Eth, Cooper, you guys did a great job joining us on those weekly meetings. And I'd also like to shout out Barb's and Jordan for helping us spread the word about the GGA early and often in all of our marketing efforts in the Mulligan and our ongoing communications with the community and with the greater golfing audience out there. Most of all, I wanna thank all of you, the members of the Global Golf Association. Global holders at Lynx Dow are a special group. There's only ever gonna be 2,727 of us and this community within the community is passionate about golf. It's passionate about networking. And we just want this platform to be something you all can use. So thank you for being part of it, because without you, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros on an Amazon web server somewhere. But with you, it's going to turn into the most incredible reciprocal golf program the world has ever seen. Speaking of, we're looking to the future. And I'd like to share that we are quickly closing in on 50 courses, which is a pretty nice network but it's gonna be pretty cool when we top 100 courses next summer. Tomorrow in the GGA Discord channel, I'm going to share the pipeline with GGA members and you'll see all of the states and countries 
that we're going to be bringing into the network over the next few months. So you have some incredible places to travel and play golf at. Of course, at the end of the day, the hosts are an incredibly important component of this as that's who's gonna be stepping up and helping us play. So I do want to also remind everyone that our hosts are valued and we will be rewarding y'all for participating, including, I believe, a fantastic grand prize next season, an all expense paid trip for one lucky host in a raffle to Lynx course number one. Of course, we'll have lots of other great stuff to reward everyone for participating, like golf equipment and pro shop credits and golf experiences. But at the end of the day, if you play golf together, it's going to be thanks enough, but we're going to make sure everyone has a great experience at the same time. So very happy to announce that the GGA is going global. We're flipping it open to all global members. If you would like to help us grow the association, add members, add guests, add features, we're going to post a sign-up form in the channel, and we'll be taking members to come on board and give us a hand. We have a number of paid tasks ready to go. So if you want to participate, be compensated for your time. We're ready to have you join the team. We're going to build this reciprocal program into something absolutely incredible together, and it's going to look great alongside our club-to-club -club reciprocity program coming sometime next year. So again, thank you for a few minutes of your time to share this incredible news. Thank you to the entire team who's helped us build it so far. And I look forward to golfing with all of you on a golf course sometime soon. Huge Coop, place. What's Huge next? Place. Oh, man, I can't wait for the GGA to open up. That is so fantastic. And you and the team have just done a stellar job. Stellar job executing that. So uh, really, really thrilling news there. Um, very exciting update on course acquisition Thursday evening. Twitter spaces. I'm going to say it again. Thursday evening, Twitter spaces. We're going to be talking golf course with Adam Beznovic, who is unfortunately predisposed right now. He's on stage, but he can't talk about it now. Twitter spaces, Thursday, course updates. We're going to be doing a lot more course updates, talking about what's going on uh, and talking about more opportunities to get involved as well uh, on Twitter. So keep an eye out for that Twitter spaces. Of course, we will post the link here in the Discord so all of you can tune in and are encouraged to come ask your questions. Uh, we're going to get nitty gritty into the details uh, as well as info on what the past year of learning about golf course acquisitions has been like. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that on Thursday. Very excited, but we had too much stuff going on tonight uh, to really dive deep on that. Um, exciting time in Lynx Dow history, uh, we are coming up on our one year anniversary. So we've got some programming being planned around that. Uh, it's going to be primarily focused on the anniversary of the Mint Day. So think first week, first weekend in January. So we're thinking about January 2nd, public Mint Day, potentially January 3rd, because that's a Tuesday. And as you all know, you're here. We like to do things on Tuesdays. So Links anniversary stuff, we're going to do, be doing prizes, giveaways, streams, guest speakers, uh, pre-recorded and live interviews, and all types of fun and games to celebrate our one-year anniversary. So really excited about that. Stay tuned for more details. If you want to get involved uh, and contribute to some of that planning, feel free to ping myself uh, or pretty much any of the starters in the chats, and we can talk about that. Uh, we have another important announcement here tonight that I want to touch on and open up for questions, comments, etc. Um, as you know, a year ago, we launched with the name Link's Dow. Uh, Thursday will be the anniversary of Mike Dudas's famous tweet, we're going to buy a top 100 golf course, Link's Dow. Uh, this was inspired by Flyfish Dow and Constitution Dow. Uh, Dow's were the the hottest rage at the time. And we went from that tweet two, week, two weeks later to minting the leisure and global NFTs that many of you hold and cherish and love. As we look to 2023 and beyond, we've been thinking a lot about the evolution of the brand, uh, how we position ourselves in the market, how we're represented in the world of golf, how we grow the community, right? We want to grow the game, grow the community, and become an even bigger force in the world of golf. Uh, ensuring that we have a brand that can grow with our membership as we continue to scale. Uh, and so with this in mind, we've done an immense amount of diligence uh, over many months. Uh, so working with Jordan, uh, our new VP, 
market is not new anymore, but our VP of marketing, Jordan, uh, has led some of this effort on research and thinking about how we're going to do this, uh, achieve these goals. Uh, we've done long debates and discussions with starters, community leaders, uh, conducted focus groups, even that some of you in the audience may have participated in, uh, and wanted to make sure that we're making, you know, really good decisions at the right time with lots and lots of feedback. So with all of that in mind, right, we're going to launch links as the brand this is centered around our core principles of growing and bringing value back to the community members. So you'll see this name change take effect on social media pages where it currently says links out. It'll say links, it's more accessible uh, to the broader golf community. And this is ultimately to bring value and growth to our organization. Uh, we're going to be launching a website for links as well to welcome golfers who might not be proficient in Web3. I know we've talked about uh, opening up purchases of the tokens with fiat and that's something that's on the roadmap for our, our devs to work on uh importantly this is a new marketing channel uh but nothing changes about the dow we're still a dow we're still buying a golf course the dow still has governance discord remains the discord name remains the same links dow.io remains the same uh but this small change we really think gives us more opportunities to scale into 2023 and beyond and grow as a brand in the world of golf. And uh, so you'll start to see these updates rolling out this week. Uh, if you have any questions on that, of course, feel free to raise your hand, come up here, ask, or send us a message in the chats. Uh, and another important update is this is the last day to order from the pro shop for Christmas day, for Christmas delivery. So uh, that's for US domestic shipping. Um, and the holiday promo is good through midnight. So $50 order equals a free koozie, $100 order equals a free mug, and $150 equals a free Lynx coffee. So these are great gifts for golfers in your life. And we do have that Garmin GPS watch still on sale, plus a member discount on top. Um, yeah, uh, if anybody has any questions on any of that, feel free to pop up and we can discuss that. Uh, I know that's a lot. It's a whirlwind there. Uh, anybody on stage want to follow up? All right, we got a request. When are we going to see? I'm oh, sorry. No, you're good. I was going to ask when we're going to see Nick play Matt, and Matt only has three clubs. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> that we need to televise that like the match. We need to get Capital One on the line. This is going to be epic. yeah. Um, very very <laughs> very fun. I'm glad that we have that on the books for next year. Uh, styro styrofoam. Dot I love it. How you doing? Hey guys, good, good. Hey, loved hearing Matt. That was awesome. Um, kind of new to the um, environment here, but uh, really excited about what you guys are doing. So, just some basic questions that I'm having trouble figuring out. Um, I'm seeing um, the couple NFTs that you have, and then I heard something uh, in the update about the DDG. Um, a limited group of 2000 something. So can you fill me in or is there maybe something you could point me to, to explain the differences between the different um, NFT pieces and what they, uh, what value they have utility they have. This is a great question, right? Um, totally hear you. Cause we've got a few different things out there. So uh, a little less than a year ago, we launched the leisure and global passes. Those are our core membership offerings. Uh, the Leisure Pass gives you the opportunity to initiate one membership at the eventual course that we buy, and the Global Membership gives you the opportunity to initiate two individual memberships or a family membership. Those two okay. passes we call the Genesis tokens, right? Those mm -hmm. are the ones that launched on January 1st. Those come with all of the benefits that you see in the FAQ page, the Callaway partnership, the Top Golf and Five Iron partnerships all of the discounts on the pro shop uh, and discounts with all of our partners. And you can access those through clubhouse.linksdow.io. Additionally, uh, what we were talking about before is the GGA, the Global Golf Association. Uh, members who hold the global tokens are able to participate in a member to member reciprocity network. Cool. So if you're a member at a course, um, you can host other global holders at your course, or if you're a global holder, you can request to play at this network of courses, which is now approaching 50 uh, courses, yeah. and we're, we're launching that out live. So that's what we're talking about. And then, of course, we have the champions, which are our PFPs here, that we launched as a, a free mint for, for those holders. 
Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, excited to dig into it and see what all there is. But um, so far, so good. It's awesome. Keep keep it up. <laughs> Sweet, like yeah, you if you have any questions, feel free to DM or uh, just tag me in the chat anytime. Awesome. Thanks a lot. No problem. Um, another thing that I almost forgot. Uh, I know we gave away a few copies of PGA 2K23, courtesy of our friends at Top Golf. Uh, it was on sale today. Jay Kirby and the Metaverse Gaming Committee have put together a sweet PGA 2K23 tournament that is going to be happening on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, with the final round on the 18th being streamed on LinkStyle's Twitch channel. We've already had 40-plus signups uh, as of a couple of hours ago. That number may have gone up. Uh, PGA 2K23 retweeted us. Uh, they're excited about it. Um, we are really excited to start dip our toe in the water of the the gaming and esports tournament, and we're thrilled by the reaction so far and all the signups we've gotten. Um, so if you're interested in playing the game, if you're interested in uh, commentating or hosting a stream, if you're just uh, curious about how any of that works, um, you can pop into the gaming channels. Uh, the Genesis Open channel is the new one that we've got down there for that specifically. Uh, and you can find the sign-up link in official links and the most recent announcement. So uh, gamers, get ready. I know it's cold out. It's hard to play real golf. So we're bringing you uh, virtual golf. Well, what an evening. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, big shout out again to Cooch uh, for coming by the Discord. What a, what a fun time. It's kind of unreal. Um, and hopefully we'll have more of those kinds of things uh, on the agenda soon and with our one-year anniversary celebration. So, uh, yeah, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in, sticking around. We're going to ship some of you uh, some sleeves of Bridgestone balls, the LinkStyle logo on them, or uh, whatever kind we can, we can get out to you. So uh, thanks, Styrofoam, for coming up, and have a fantastic evening.